Hi everyone, my name is Mara and I'm a PM in uh, Azure SQL and I'm very excited to be with you today. We are going to discuss a bit about SQL Data Sync in Azure SQL. Uh, so we are going to talk about what it is, how it works, some common scenarios in which we recommend users to use SQL Data Sync. And then we'll also do a demo in which we'll synchronize uh, some databases between US and Asia in Azure SQL. OK, great, so let's get started. So SQL Data Sync allows you to synchronize data across databases that, that are in Azure SQL, SQL Server on-prem or SQL Server on other virtual machines. And uh, SQL Data Sync is centered around the concept of a sync group, which contains one hub database that has to be on Azure SQL and one on more databases that can also be on uh, SQL Server on-prem, for instance. So there are some key properties around the sync group. And the first one is the sync schema. When you specify what are the tables that you will want to have synchronized within a database, then you will set um, a sync direction. So here you can select one way synchronization or bidirectional synchronization between the hub and member databases. So this means that you can sync uh, from member to hub, hub to member or both. Then you can set the sync, uh, sync frequency, which defines how frequently you want the sync activity to be triggered. So for instance, you can, you can put it as frequent as one second or as frequent as 30 days, right? Um, however, it, it's worth mentioning, even if you set sync every one second, what this means is that the sync will be triggered one second after the previous synchronization was completed. So that's an important aspect to be aware of. And uh, then you have conflict resolving policy. So here it allows you to define what should happen if you have a conflict on data modification, right? So which change should be preserved? And here as a user, you have two options. You can select hub wins, which says that basically the changes in the hub will always override those in the member database. Or you can also select member wins, in which of course you can say the changes in the member will override those in the hub. And in case you have more, um, for instance, on-prem members, the final value will depend on which member syncs first. So moving onwards, you can see uh, the sync uh, data, the SQL data sync topology is hub and spoke within a sync group. So uh, the member database is only synced through the hub database, which is in Azure SQL. So more specifically, uh, changes from the hub are downloaded to the member and changes from the member are uploaded to the hub, right? So um, because of that, you cannot sync on-prem databases, for instance, directly. However, as you can see in figure two, you can still sync them indirectly through the hub database, which is on cloud. It's also worth mentioning that SQL Data Sync tracks uh, changes using uh, DML <coughs> triggers, so insert, update, delete triggers, and the changes are recorded in a site table that is in more site in site tables that are stored in the user's database. So these activities do have an impact on your database workload. So it's very important that before you start using SQL Data Sync, you assess your, you assess your service tier and upgrade, uh, upgrade if needed before setting up the sync group. So moving onwards, we have some key uh, use cases for which we uh, recommend or we've seen SQL Data Sync being, being used. First, you have hybrid data synchronization. So you can keep data synchronized between databases in SQL Server, Azure SQL, and this capability may uh, appeal to you in case you're considering moving to the cloud and you would like to put some of your application on Azure. Then you have distributed application. So um, synchronize distributed applications and here you can uh, sync data across databases that have different workloads. So you might have one production database and another database that has an analytics workload, then you might decide to, to synchronize the, them. And lastly, SQL Data Sync is often used for global synchronization, which we'll also do in the upcoming demo. And here allows you, it, this allows you to keep databases in regions across the world synchronized. And this is helpful because in order to minimize network latency, it's best to have your data in a region close to you. So before moving onwards, it's worth mentioning that um, 
uh, SQL data sync offers eventual consistency. So sin since sync is trigger based and transactionally consistency is not um, guaranteed. However, Microsoft does guarantee that all the changes are eventually made and SQL data sync does not cause any, any data loss. So that's worth having in mind as you decide for what use cases you decide to use SQL data sync. Uh, so we get a lot of questions for from clients in what scenarios they should use or not use SQL data sync. So I set up this slide to kind of show other uh, repl replication technologies and in which context you might use which. And again, this is in no way the, the most comprehensive list. There are many more scenarios, many other solutions for um, data replication. But as we talked about, you, you might use SQL data sync to synchronize distributed workloads and globally distributed data. Um, for uh, disaster recovery and business continuity, you should um, rather use other solutions. And here, what we mean through business continuity is like the procedure that enable your business to continue operating even if there is some disruption, such as data center outage, application upgrades, regional disasters, other types of outages. Um, then if you are exploring scaling out read-only workloads, and here what we mean for this is offloading, offloading read-only workloads in, instead of running them on the read-write replica. So this, uh, in this way, you, you isolate some read-only workloads from read-write workloads such that they don't affect their performance. So in this case, you have some other solutions available. And lastly, for for migrations, from, for, for instance, from on-prem to, to cloud, uh, we recommend a data migration service. So for instance, with online migrations, you can ensure synchronization between source database and target database. But let's say you want to ensure that the source and target remain synchronized even after the uh, migration process is completed. Then you might decide to use SQL data sync to to, to ensure that those databases are still functional and in sync for the longer term post migration as well. Great. So very recently we, we launched a new feature within SQL data sync private link, which is currently in public preview. And uh, private link allows you to choose a service managed private endpoint to establish a secure connection between the sync service and the member database and the hub database during the the data synchronization and we'll see this in the demo we'll we'll set up private link um a service managed private endpoint is just a private ip address within a specific virtual network and subnet that is owned by microsoft and um, the in order to use private link both of your your member and hub databases must be hosted in azure in the same cloud uh, type, so both in public cloud or both in the government cloud. And it's also worth mentioning that users must manually approve the service managed private endpoint for SQL data sync to, to actually work well with private link. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna do that. You can do that either in Azure portal, either in the in the PowerShell as well. So once the service managed private endpoint is manually approved by the user, both for setting up the connection between sync service and hub, sync service and, and members, all the communication uh, will happen over that private link, which is very secure. And also you can update existing sync groups to have this feature enabled. Um, it's also worth mentioning the, the existence of the sync agent. So to ensure uh, data security, Sync uses the, this agent to communicate with any, mem any member databases on, on the SQL server, such that um, there are communication uh, with databases behind the firewall is, uh, is prevented. And here in order to communicate with the agent, the Sync service uses encrypted connections and the unique token, which is called the, the agent key. So in general, as a, as a best practice, we recommend to not re register an on-premise database with more than one agent. That's, that's important to know before setting up a sync group with uh, on-premises databases. Um, and it's good to avoid this even if you're syncing different tables for different sync groups because registering on an on-premise database with multiple client agents can pose multiple challenges when you delete one of the sync groups. 
So that's just a best practice to have in mind. So general considerations to have in mind uh, before using SQL data sync. Um, as we talked about the performance impact, right? The set tables created on the user database, and they do have an impact on your workload. So ensure your service tier, the right service tier is selected uh, before moving on with SQL data sync. Eventual consistency, we talked about this. Um, however, we do guarantee that SQL data sync does not cause um, any data losses. And lastly, there are some um, additional limitations to have in mind. So in order to be added to single groups, tables that you want to synchronize must have a primary key. As we'll see soon in the in the demo, you you must uh, you must know that Azure Active Directory authorization is not supported. There are several data types that are not supported and there are some service and database dimensions limitations. For instance, um, the maximum number of endpoints in a single sync group is 30 or the maximum number of um, on premise endpoints in a single sync group is five. However, there are workarounds and for instance, you could create um, more sync groups and so on. Great, so let's move onwards. So now I'm going to show you how to use SQL data sync in the Azure portal. Um, and we're going to synchronize um, some Azure SQL databases across US and Asia by directionally for a, for a food business that wants to ensure that their inventory is the same across regions. It's in sync across regions around the world. So let's start. So here you can see the hub database in which we have a very small food inventory. Uh, and we want to make sure the same items are recorded in our inventory in a different region in Asia. Um, as you can see, um, this is incomplete. We only have three items here and we had uh, four in the previous one. So we want to set up bidirectional synchronization between the hub and member. Member would be the Asia database. So on the hub database, I go and create a new sync group. I give it a name, US to Asia. I set up a metadata database. You can use a available one. You, it's recommended to set up a new one. In this, it has to be in the same region as your hub database. Um, for pricing tier, I'm going to use the basic pricing tier since for the purpose of this demo, I need, I don't need much space. I'll use the default collation. Set automatic sync. Let's say I want to trigger the sync operation every two seconds, and they want hub win conflict resolution. Here, as you can see, you use private link. I told you more about it. You can learn more about it. This documentation, and now we create the sync group. So while the sync group is, create, is deploying, we must manually approve the private endpoint connection. So we, we go here, the private, this is the private endpoint between the sync service and the hub database. So I prove it manually. And this is necessary in order for the sync group to be created. And now it's been created and I want to add members. So I have to log on the hub database with the server credentials. And as you can see, I can add an on-cloud database or an on-prem database. Here I add the Asia member from, in, which is in the cloud, it's an Azure database. I go to my Asia test ser server. Here I select bidirectional synchronization and I have to log in in the member database with those server credentials as well. Once again, I use private link and I'll have to manually approve it. And as I mentioned before, I can use private link in this context because I'm synchronizing databases that are both in Azure. I go and I go on the member database on the server side and approve the private endpoint connection. And now the members member database should be added to the synchronization operation. Now it's still processing. 
And now that has been completed, and what I want to do is to select the data that I actually want to synchronize. So I refresh the schema. Very important, only the tables that have private uh, primary key are going to show up here, as you can see. My, my, the table that I want to synchronize, the fruits inventory does have it. It's a very small table. I just synchronize everything in there. And I do the same for the member database. I refresh the schema. And synchronize everything. This has a primary key as well, so all good. Here you can see on the hub database, the single group appears, US to Asia, we just set it up. It has two, two databases. And here you can see some monitoring logs on, on the progress. And now let's see if the data has actually been synchronized. So now the expected behavior is that in our member database in Asia, we'll see the same inventory items as in our um, main database in the hub in the US. Now I'm just going to go in the query editor for both databases to check whether I have same data for both. As you can see, there have been some data sync tables created on the user's database. This is why I was telling you that it's important to ensure that you are uh, set you have the right uh, tier set before using SQL data sync. Now let's see whether we have same data as in the US. And we do. Remember we had initially we did not we did not have the melon and now, now we do it. Now we have it same as in the US. And now I'm gonna go and add a new item to my Asia database and see if it shows up in uh, in US because I set up bidirectional synchronization. So I should see it synchronized in the US as well from member to hub as well. So I'll add a dragon food. And as you can see, I made a spelling error. So I'll get an error, I'll fix it and it should work. Okay, so now we have all these ones with the dragon fruit added. Now let's check in the US hub database. Yes, as you can see, now let's run. It takes a moment and it does show up. So uh, we set up successfully bidirectional synchronization between US and Asia for a for a small foods business. Great. Um, so let's let's continue now. Um, here you can see some additional resources on SQL data sync. I included some links that take you through all the steps for setting up SQL data sync between databases in Azure SQL and SQL Server in the Azure portal, but also in the PowerShell. Um, and here you can you can learn more and feel free to, to reach out with any additional questions you might have about SQL data sync. Thank you.